You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Cabral Concept. Glad to have you back with me here today on part two of our Cabral House Calls. Each and every Saturday and Sunday, we go through our community's questions. And yesterday, we did that, just that. We went through about, what, six questions yesterday. We answered questions on farm-raised salmon and tilapia and potential food sensitivities surrounding those. We went over the longest dry fast or water fast that I've done and my recommendation for most people. We also talked about supplementing with N-acetylcysteine. We talked about someone having issues with Hashimoto's, Epstein-Barr virus, anemia, allergies. What's the difference between a liver cleanse and a liver detox to help them? And then we also went over uh, what happens with getting congested congestion, mucus, sinus issues, sneezing during the night or early a.m. So check out yesterday's show. That was episode 1380 for answers to those questions. And of course, many more little insights added along the way. Now today, we're going to get more uh, in-depth on these questions uh, and many more, I should say, that have come in from our community. So what I'd like to do is answer anywhere between five and 10 questions every Saturday and five and 10 questions every Sunday. So if you're new to the show, we really do take our uh, responsibility and mission and trying to give back and answer people's questions the best that we can. So that's what we do. Uh, really excited about doing this. We've now been doing this for almost four years. Today is episode 1381. So you can find all the questions over at stephencabral.com forward slash 1381. And the way to ask your own question is at stephencabral.com forward slash ask Cabral. Just do keep in mind, we typically run between four and six weeks behind on answering your question on the actual podcast where you hear it here. Now, if you want same day questions answered, you can go to cabralsupportgroup.com, which is our private Facebook group. And we're happy to answer those questions right over there. All right. Well, let's dive into today's first question. Today's first question is coming in from Cindy. She's saying, I'm hoping to begin easing into a 24-hour fast, one-day reset diet once or twice a month. I've been doing the 12-hour overnight fasting for a couple weeks now and feeling calmer, but I'm hoping to add an extra autophagy benefit from an at least 24-hour fast, one-day reset. I'm a nursing mom, so I can't do the quarterly detox yet. I'm wondering if Dr. Brawl has recommendations on the timing of the 24-hour fast as it relates to a woman's fertility cycle. No artificial hormones here, and my cycles are pretty regular with a shorter luteal phase since I'm returning to full fertility after my last pregnancy. I think I remember Dr. Brawl saying that progesterone is a precursor to cortisol, which I think I have chronically high levels of working on it. But I've also seen research showing that fasting can interrupt the hormones that tip off follicle stimulation preceding ovulation. So the estrogen dominant part of the cycle might not be the best time either. I've ordered the organic acids test and HTMA and will complete those this week. Probably any help would be appreciated. Okay, Cindy, I know what you're asking and I understand and I want to give you those answers. Just keep in mind that on this podcast, we are not here to treat, diagnose, or cure any disease, especially not over podcasts. What we're doing is helping people heal from the inside out. We're talking about finding the root causes. We're talking about really getting people into a more healthy regimen. And we're talking about combining the wisdom of functional medicine with Ayurveda, with bioregulatory medicine, orthomolecular medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, Eastern-based philosophy, and, and all of the other healing realms in the world. So first things first, we don't want to do an extended fast even while nursing. It could actually begin to limit your actual milk supply. So one, we want to look at that. Two, you don't want to go into ketosis while nursing. It's my recommendation that you do not. The third point that you most likely want to be keeping your water levels high. So we'll, we're definitely talking about if, if you're fasting, at least doing a lot of water 
but probably more like a one-day reset using the shake for breakfast, shake at lunch, shake mid-afternoon, and then dinner at night would make more sense. You're getting all the nutrients and you're getting a lot of water if you do decide to do that. Now, you might wait just until you're essentially not nursing anymore, or maybe you're just doing one or two nursing sessions for your child. Okay, so that's that part. And then when should you do a 24-hour fast during a woman's fertility cycle? Well, if you have a normal cycle, then it's not as much of an issue. It's really not. Because you're going from Sunday night to Monday night. And if you're even more worried about it, you can do the one-day reset, which is the one scoop of uh, daily nutritional support at breakfast with 20 ounces of water, same exact thing at lunch, the same exact thing three, four hours later, and then you have dinner that night. I do that. It's easy. It's simple. My body gets nutrients. I'm getting super hydrated. Uh, I get my vitamins. I get the things that help with liver detox. So do that first, and then you can work your way to potentially just water fast that day. So when should you do it? Well, I would do it, my opinion... I would do it not at the point of lowest hormones, so probably not the uh, first three, four days. Not everyone knows this. So day one is the first day of menstruation. So in a female cycle, you count that as day one. I personally probably wouldn't do it days one through four or five, okay? So point of lowest hormones, the hormones are beginning to get ramped back up, all right? And I wouldn't do it the last five days of your ovulatory cycle as well. Uh, I could see you doing any time in between there, so you basically have about a you know, somewhere around a 10-day buffer or so in the middle, considering a a female uh, would typically have somewhere around a 28-day cycle. So that's my recommendation. I really think that if your body's healthy, then you will be healthy and get even healthier by doing one of these fasts as well. So Cindy, your labs will tell you the most by doing the I mean, literally simply doing the most important lab out there for hormones, which formerly we called it the thyroid adrenal hormone, but the lab is now called the complete stress mood and metabolism test because it more encompasses what you're getting out of that. That's the one to do. And then of course, hair tissue mineral analysis, fantastic, which we call the minerals and metals test now, and formerly the organic acid that we call the um, candida metabolic and vitamins test. So hopefully that was helpful. And moving on now to Sonia. Sonia says, Hi, Dr. Brawl. First of all, I want to thank you for being a great teacher, for the founding the IHP Institute, and sharing your knowledge. I've come very far health-wise. I'm grateful for my health, but I'm stuck in one issue, being fibrocystic breasts. I listen to labs and protocols I've done. I give an overview of what I've tried. The Big Five Labs in November 2018, I completed the CBO, Gut Rebuilding Parasite Protocol, Done the 21-day detox, seven-day detox. Let's see what else. Mostly dairy and gluten-free. Worked on my stress reduction, feeling great stress-wise. Weaned off AED and progesterone cream. And my current supplement regimen, she just goes through all of her supplements. Again, you can read this whole question. It's a longer one at stephencabral.com forward slash 1381. I would love for you to follow along. But in the essence of time, I want to make sure we get in at least five questions today. So she goes through her supplement um, regimen. Everything was nearly perfect when she ran her thyroid adrenal hormone in August. Thyroid function was great, progesterone great. However, estrogen was high. I've used DIM, evening primrose, chase tree, vitamin E, been weaned off the supplements. I started doing estrogen balance again, was quite sure the FB would subside, but it got worse. I got the recommendation to try a systemic enzyme like serapeptase or natokinase. We saw there is also research on it, but didn't find much in terms of dosage. Have you tried it for this specific issue? And would you uh, offer insight? Oh, this is great. So you already know, like that is what I do. So for issues regarding this fibrocystic breast, we need to look at this. We need to look at going back to that. I mean, again, this is the test for it. So you want to run the complete stress mood and metabolism test. All right, really important. I would also love you to run a minerals and metals test. So, okay. We need to find out that there's no heavy metals creating oxidation. We need to find out that there's not higher levels of cortisol or higher levels of estrogen. Again, we can find that on that mood metabolism based test. What else do we want to do? And then also regulation of blood sugar. So we need to make sure there's not higher levels of insulin or higher levels of hemoglobin A1C. Super important. That's why fasting, just our last question, is actually very powerful as well in terms of helping with fibrocystic breasts as well. Okay, so that's a huge part of it. We're talking about PCOS. We're talking about fibrocystic breasts. We're talking about estrogen dominance. You need to keep opening up those liver pathways. Keep doing the functional medicine detoxes, making sure you're getting 12 to 14 hours of an overnight fast, six at night to six in the morning, six at night to eight in the morning maybe. Now, we need to look at a couple more things. Daily detoxification. What do you need for that? Well, you need to keep those detox pathways open. So on a daily basis, use your daily fruit and vegetable blend. 
use your daily omega-3 supports. But also, you want to make sure that you're getting a couple cups of cruciferous vegetables on a daily basis. Broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, anything like that. So just look up cruciferous vegetables. A couple cups a day, they're going to provide you with sulforaphane, the DIM, the I3C. That's why I want you using the estrogen balance. And these are all things we use. Now, you talked about a product that not a lot of people talk about that we use all the time for a proteolytic enzyme. So we use natokinase, we use serapeptase, we use our product called Florafilm. We also use, we've used products before like anything higher in proteases, natokinase, serapeptase are great. So proteolytic enzymes. We use a higher dosage though, to be honest. We do four capsules typically upon waking and four capsules before bed. And we'll use that for three to six months to work on breaking down a fibrin to work on breaking down proteins. And we always do it away from food, the most important dosage being upon waking. So if you can only afford four a day, you take them upon waking. So uh, Sonia, you're on the right path. You're doing the right things. The body's healing. Your numbers are starting to show it. Keep on working forward. You're doing great. All right. uh, Sauna is another nice one, but we'll leave that for today. Okay. One more thing, self-massage as well, okay? Move the lymphatic system. You actually can massage the breast tissue. You can massage the, because your lymph glands are literally right under your armpit too. So you want to be able to move the lymph. Use a dry brush, do Abhyanga sesame oil-based massage, and that's going to help tremendously. All right, I could talk about this all day. Let's move on to Nikki's question. Hi, my name is Nikki. I have a two-year-old daughter. We're looking to get started in the CBD oil. I noticed your website sold out. I was wondering if it would be coming back soon. Uh, was wondering what's the proper dosage for CBD oil in kids. And could I set up a consultation with Dr. Ball to see my two-year-old? She's diagnosed with a specific disorder. Uh, maybe I'll take that out just for privacy reasons. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm going to take it out. Privacy reasons. And she has been on a ventilator the last year, and we're monitoring gut-based motility. Any help? Much appreciated, Nikki. All right, Nikki, thank you for writing in. Appreciate you. So we are so close You know, I've said that before, right? So I I don't want to get everyone's hopes up, but we are so close to being able to get CBD oil back on the website, okay? We've got a couple different avenues we're going down. If they will not allow us to process it on our website, we're going to try to get it up on Amazon under a different name. And then if not, maybe even at the same time, we'll get it up on our website it's so crazy. I mean, the the stories, I mean, it's it's funny timing because I was just on a phone with a, a group of attorneys we have. I mean, that's how crazy these things are. And this is not the world that I want to be in, to be honest with you. Like, I want to do these podcasts. I want to do teaching, but I have to get on with my team and they have to let us know what are legal ramifications. It's a crazy world we live in. Buy all the alcohol you want, buy all the over drugs that you want, but CBD oil, we start talking about that that comes from a plant. And forget about it. You're in this legal, um, I don't even know, tunnel that nobody knows the answer to. That's what it comes down to. So we're doing our best. We're really playing by the rules, though, because we have to play by the rules compliance-wise. We always want to do that. So we have to make sure we get rid of all claims, things, things of that nature. Dosing, there are studies with kids using dosage up to 600 milligrams. Am I recommending that for you? Absolutely not. Well, what I recommend... You could start with 5 milligrams or 10 milligrams if you'd like for a child. Adults typically take 25 milligrams to 50 milligrams uh, per dosage. Start at the smallest dose. Start super small. And that's all you want to look for, right? And then you can, because you can always use more, right? So what if you get no results starting at uh, five milligrams? No big deal. You have a bottle. You can go to 10 milligrams, right? You can work up slowly. And that's always a great thing in general. You might find the child, uh, your child gets a little groggy at 20 milligrams or 30 milligrams. Well, that's the upper limit, at least for now. Things can change. The body's not static. All right. So hopefully that's been helpful. I am opening back up. I've never mentioned this. That's why you need to listen to all the podcasts, right? I've never mentioned this before. I'll probably talk about it in the coming months. My personal practice, again, you can meet with my health coaches and I oversee those labs. So there's, you can get, believe me, I'm still going to give you advice. But my private practice working one-on-one with me has been sold out now for, I don't know, somewhere around 16 months or so. But I will be taking on about 20 new people starting in January 2020. And that will most likely be the only time I take on new people. My personal practice is super booked up. People stay on and and I want to make sure that they get the attention they deserve. So if you're interested in applying on every single podcast page, like if you go to stevencabral.com forward slash 1381 and you just scroll down the page into um, the show notes and you go below the podcast, it says apply to Dr. Cabral's private practice. And you're always welcome to apply right there. And um, again, I I, I can only work with 20 people probably, maybe that's about it because I have have my current practice. So 
I'll see those people over the course of about four weeks to six weeks, and then they'll be a part of um, my practice is now a six-month uh, protocol because I want to give people the highest level of service possible. But again, no matter what, we can help you. You can order a lab at equilibriumnutrition.com. I'm still going to oversee that. We're still going to make recommendations. You can work with one of my health coaches also for one-third of the price, and I'm going to oversee your labs. So my goal is to make sure that health is always within reach for you, and I'll do whatever I can to make sure that you get your answers. All right. Michael's up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl. Thank you for all you do. I finally found my North Star with health once I discovered the Rain Barrel Effect book. I'm 30 years old. I've been on level two foundational protocol for a while. Never done any functional medicine lab tests, but definitely suspect gut issues. Dealing with constipation, IBS my entire life. Grew up on bagel bites and fruit roll-ups. That's a great one, Michael. Fruit roll-ups is a blast from the past. I used to eat fruit roll-ups with all those food dye in there as well back in the day. Your question is, on my blood work, I've elevated bilirubin. Doctor calls it Gilbert's syndrome. Sometimes the whites of my eyes can be a bit yellow. I don't want to be like Gilbert. It's also called Gilbert sometimes for people. Uh, Please help. Second question, mild case of tinnitus. I used to feel like I always had to pop my ears. Every time I make the yawning gesture, my ears pop. I have some feelings about this. I'm currently experiencing a little bit of hearing loss. Almost feels like inflammation. I'm going to to either test with organic acids test, HDMA, or just jump right into the CBO protocol. Any advice is much appreciated. Michael, both of these have been answered in depth. Go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts. Type in Gil, well, it's Gilbert, if you want to say it, I guess, phonetically, G-I-L-B-E-R-T. Type that right in. Maybe I can do it for you right now as well. And then also type in tinnitus and type in ringing just separately. They can be separate searches and you'll find all my podcasts on tinnitus as well as ringing in the ears. Same exact thing. One's a medical term. One isn't. They're both okay to use. And then if I just type in Gilbert, Gilbert, is it sometimes pronounced? You'll find four shows. I talked about it on with the latest being 1360, just two weeks ago. Now, to answer your specific question, Michael, I would highly recommend exactly what you just talked about, the starter kit. For anybody just like, oh, I don't know where to start. All right, the number one place is the big five. That's it. Number one place is the big five labs. The only reason a human would not run the big five labs is because of price. That's it. But what we've done now is the break the price into three payments. So it allows people to get literally the best lab package in the world for $600 off daily savings. You get an hour health coaching call. I'm also overseeing the the lab results. To me, it's the best deal out there. And I run it myself. Like that's the thing. That's it's called, well, I think we changed it maybe a little bit, but it's called Dr. Brawl's Big Five. Like that's what I run every single year. So anyway, that's that. And if you can't do that, well, then you would do the starter kit. And the starter kit is the candida metabolism and vitamins test, along with the minerals and metals test. So it gives you all your minerals, all your vitamins, your gut function. It's fantastic. Michael, if you really felt you had gut-based issues, you might add on the stool test to that as well or the food sensitivity. So that's your specific answer. Hopefully that helps. Judy says, do you offer or plan to offer C-reactive protein with coaching? My medical provider doesn't offer it. Well, Judy, you're welcome. If you run any lab with us, or you're part of the private wellness practice, you can just let us know you have high C-reactive protein. I mean, that's, that's basically it. Meaning like, so for anybody who wants to know CRP, your CRP should be 0.5 or less, definitely below a one. And you would just let us know. And if you have high CRP, well, we know there's acute-based inflammation and we can start to look at all sorts of issues of what that might be. If you're looking to run that test, well, your medical provider should run it. You should just let them know, listen, I'd like to see my CRP. I'd like to see if I have acute inflammation. And then if they ever say to you, I'm not going to run that for you, you just say, okay, well, please put it in my notes that I did request it and you said I didn't want to run it. Uh, Because then they're liable and you should be able to ask for CRP. It's a very specific and needed lab test to look at. What if you had CRP of an eight or 10? You know, that's important. Your arteries could be inflamed. You might have rheumatoid arthritis. You might, you might have something going on, right? So we want to know what that is. That's very valid. There's nothing wrong with that. And remember, you're the one paying for your health insurance, right? Your medical provider is not. Or if you mean your medical provider is your health insurance, I see what you're saying. So maybe it's your health insurance. Oh, it's such a tangled web. <laughs> so if it's your health insurance, well, you might just have to pay for that one out of pocket, right? You might have to pay $30 or $40 to find out what your CRP is if it's not covered by your health insurance. That does sometimes happen. I order all of my own blood lab work through various companies online. 
One of them is uh, life extension, and you can just run the female panel or I run the male panel, and that includes CRP. So tough one, right, Judy? I'm, I'm there with you. I, I know what it's like. I mean, I believe everyone should have an MD. So never, I don't want to ever misconstrue my recommendations. You need a medical doctor. Like, don't, I don't want to get anything twisted here about my recommendations. I believe everyone should have an integrative health practitioner, and I believe everyone should have a medical doctor. Your medical doctor is making sure to diagnose you for disease. Your integrative health practitioner is making sure that you stay disease free, right? So that's what they do. Your medical doctor is not there to give you advice on diet, exercise, stress reduction, toxin removal, rest, uh, which is the parasympathetic nervous system, emotional balance, supplement protocols, or a success mindset. That's the de-stress protocol taught to all certified integrative health practitioners. Now, instead of a certified integrative health practitioner, well, maybe it's a naturopathic doctor. Maybe it's someone in this field who knows about integrative health, right? But I can assure you the integrative health practitioners, and you can check out the new website at integrativehealthpractitioner.org. It's brand new. It's only 24 hours old. We're working out a couple little tweaks here and there. So believe me, there'll be so many more updates, but you'll see close to a thousand practitioners all around the world now. So I wasn't supposed to announce it today. (laughs) I really wasn't supposed to for two weeks, but hey, I don't edit any of my podcasts. So cat's out of the bag. You can check it out there. And that's it. So again, I'm a huge believer in all forms of medicine. You need a medical doctor, you need an integrative health practitioner, use both. And uh, the truth is that health insurance only looks at disease. It only pays for sick care, right? We're trying to keep people healthy. We're trying to keep people alive. That's what we want. But we don't want to just keep them alive either. We want people to be living until they're 100 years old or more with abundance, with vitality, with an absolute zest for life. Because if not, well, what's the point, right, of living, right? So we want to work you there. We know that we can help you. And again, you, the best way to do that is through functional medicine lab testing, because then you get a personalized plan just for you. The second best way is to begin to do things that you suspect would be an issue. For example, if you have gut-based issues and you can't do the lab testing, you might want to just do the CBO protocol, right? Just get right into that. Now, if you're like, well, I think the things are pretty good, you may want to just start with the functional medicine detox, 7, 14, or 21 day, and then do what I do every day, which is the daily foundational protocol level two or level three. So it's a place to start, right? So it's, it's, it's not your ending point, but it's a place to start. Hopefully today's podcast was helpful. Thank you so much for tuning into the show. I appreciate you. Have an amazing rest of your weekend. And we'll talk tomorrow on our motivation and mindset Monday. Before you go, I wanted to ask you this question. What if I could teach you in just a couple of hours how to transform your thyroid, hormones, adrenal, cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, weight loss, energy, mood, brain, pregnancy, anti-aging, or many other health-related issues? After 20 years in private practice, after seeing and overseeing a quarter of a million client appointments, I sincerely feel I have the real-world data and have found the answer you've been searching for. So what I've done is spent hundreds of hours of my own time refining what you need to know in order to uncover your underlying root cause health issues and then begin to rebalance the body and bring it back to a state of robust health and wellness. I'm going to teach you exactly what I do in my private practice so you can understand how you got here and now what you need to do in order to heal. You'll receive all of the important success checklists, protocols, and even ways to customize it to make the program fit your busy life. And you'll get all of this at a fraction of the price. Let me save you the time, money, energy, stress, and frustration of not knowing what to do next. Instead of reading dozens of books on the topic and seeing multiple practitioners, I will condense everything that you need to know in just a few hours of video tutorials that you can watch and listen to anywhere. Together, we will make this healing process an enjoyable one that you can take with you for the rest of your life. I wish you all of the best of health and happiness, and I hope to be able to guide you on your healing journey through my health results accelerators. Simply choose the health imbalance you're currently suffering from, and by the end of today, you'll know what went wrong and how to get well again. I guarantee it. For details, head over now to stephencabral.com forward slash courses.